Hi, this is presentation for CO275 on how to install Titanium Studio. We begin by navigating to www.accelerator.com. This is the website which hosts our development environment which will allow us to create mobile applications for Android, for iPhone, Blackberry and uh, other environments as well. So you can simply Google A-P-P-C-E-L-E-R-A-T-O-R -E -E and then the Titanium Mobile Development Platform uh, is uh, our website. Okay, from here there's going to be a, a download Titanium link somewhere. Perhaps in time this homepage does not look exactly the same as in this video, uh, but somewhere here there's going to be a download Titanium link. Please click on that link and uh, now we have a couple of options uh, in your uh, situation, you may have to sign up for a free account with Accelerator.com before you can start downloading Titanium. As you can see, I am already logged in, uh, so uh, it took me directly to the download section. So in this video, I will show how to install Titanium on the Windows platform. So we'll go ahead and select Windows under Titanium Downloads. Okay, and so now I have titanium underscore studio dot exe. That's the program that I'm downloading. In this first section, I'm going to show you how to download all the software that we need, and then after that, uh, we're going to perform the installation. Okay, so right now, titanium studio is downloading. At the same time, uh, let's navigate for uh, another program that we need and that is the Android Software Development Kit. The Android Software Development Kit you can also Google uh, but it's under developer.android.com slash sdk slash index.html and we'll go ahead and download the SDK for Windows. Finally, in order to um, run titanium properly we will need uh, Java and we specifically need uh, Java SDK or software development kit now to find Java SDK I usually go to Sun I'm sorry java.sun.com but you can google uh, Java SDK and you should arrive uh, now at the Oracle website and there are many versions of Java we are going to click on Java SE and next we have two primary types of, of Java SE the JDK or Java Development Kit or JRE Java Runtime Environment if you're trying just to execute programs in Java, all you need is the environment. But if you're trying to write software that relies on Java, like in our case, we need the JDK. So, let's see. Uh, let me go ahead and click download. Uh, I want to take you to this list right here. Uh, first of all, we're downloading Java version 7, update 5. I have to click accept for the license agreement and it's important that out of this long list of different files you find the right version for your uh, operating system so if you have 64-bit windows download this file if you have 32-bit um, windows then go ahead and download this file my windows uh, is uh, an older uh, version and uh, my computer actually has about two gigabytes of memory it's a uh, I'd say an average computer will say save this file um, so that's why I'm downloading this one 
you can also download a zipped form of it but if possible just go ahead and get this executable uh, version of JDK okay so at this point my files are downloading and again what we're trying to uh, have at this point uh, for some reason I'm downloading the uh, studio twice okay so we're looking for for three files and it uh, looks like I already uh, did these downloads earlier so I'll, I'll cancel the current ones so the three files that we need is the titanium studio file okay, we'll also need the java file and then the android okay so here they are titanium studio this is the android environment the android sdk and then the java and then go ahead and remove these duplicates let's see remove from the list uh, remove from the list get rid of those okay so on your system you should have these three uh, files uh, and we're going to soon execute them we're going to uh, run them to do that I'll go ahead and open the folder containing the files and uh, I can see I have I have uh, three files I'll go ahead and delete these ones okay so the three files we're interested in is the titanium studio JDK and the Android now the way I'm running this Windows system is as an underprivileged or limited user uh, perhaps you are running your desktop as the administrator uh, that's probably not the best way to do that for security reasons as you browse web pages you might be installing viruses so I'll show you how to install titanium uh, as a limited user we'll be switching to administrator for various uh, parts so we're going to start <coughs> by installing Java now, you may already have Java installed but you have to have the JDK okay all right so we'll go ahead and install all our software into a specific directory um, I will create this directory first it's gonna be on my C drive I'll call this directory grcc okay so under the C drive I now have a directory called grcc now the reason why I'm doing this is because most programs will go under program files and uh, this is not a problem you, you can install your software there but there are a lot of other programs there already and sometimes uh, when looking for these files it may be hard to find them also on your 64-bit windows you probably have C programs 86 and then C program files so these locations uh, can be confusing so we'll go ahead and put all our software under C GRCC okay let's go to downloads and notice that instead of just double clicking on this file I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say run as and um, I'm going to run this program as administrator in just a moment okay run as administrator and I'll go ahead and put in my credentials and so while the desktop is running as a limited user my software now is being installed uh, with the uh, proper uh, privileges so that all the users on my computer will be able to use uh, the software okay so we'll go through uh, the elements of the installation here all right we'll go ahead and say next this is great so that's what we need and I'll change the path and it replace program files with grcc okay so it's c grcc java and then the jdk okay we'll say okay to that we'll say next now 
Now, it's possible that uh, when you are watching this video, there's actually a newer version of Java available. So perhaps it's Java 8 or Update 7. Just go ahead and download the most uh, current version of Java. So just because I have uh, Java 7 Update 5 doesn't mean that you have to have that installed as well. Okay, and notice that uh, with JDK we automatically get JRE as well. And here as well I'm going to adjust the paths. So it's under C, GRCC, Java, and then GRE7. We'll say OK to that. Okay, momentarily this is going to be completed. Alright, great. So now we have Java installed. We'll say continue. Okay. While we were installing Java, uh, a couple of things did not happen that we need done. What we need to create now are two environment variables which are going to allow us to use Java in other software. Okay, here's Java FX SDK. Uh, this is an optional component, and if you want to, you can uh, install it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, install it under C, GRCC. Then we have Java. Uh, let's see, let's uh, create a new directory. Whoops. Okay, hello here. New folder. Folder. Oh. All right, we'll just go ahead and plug it right inside of Java. Okay, so the component that was not performed for us automatically is uh, a couple of uh, environment variables. To create new environment variables, you have to right-click on my computer or right-click on computer on Windows 7, go to Properties, then go to Advanced, and then click on Environment Variables. This is very important because uh, our Titanium uh, accelerator will not work correctly without this setup. And inside of the environment variables, you need to create Java home environment variable and then the path okay so on my computer these two are already created on your computer press new and then type in Java home Java underscore okay thank you for installing this so on your computer you have to type in under variable name Java underscore home capital letters and then type in the the path to your JDK directory if you followed uh, my installation then that's uh, your path I can find my JDK by going to GRCC going to Java and then see I have the JDK directory so in the environment variable this has to be exactly the same and then the next environment variable is in path and simply add the bin directory to the same path for GDK so these are required now once you created these environment variables you'll have to restart the computer in order for these to work correctly okay so uh, install Java then restart the computer and um, and then resume the installation okay what I will do next is I'm going to go ahead 
and install the Android environment. Again, I'll say run as, then administrator, and um, the Android installation is a multi-step process. In other words, we will first install certain tools, and then these tools will download additional software for us. So we'll say next. We'll say go ahead and and you can see that this is already um, uh, detecting the Java that we installed in step one. So we'll say next. Uh, we'll say install and let anybody use it. Next. And here we'll go ahead and change this to also the GRCC path. CGRCC Android. Next. Okay. In order to uh, properly install the components of Android that we need, I'm going to use um, I'm going to use documentation that comes from Accelerator. Okay, this documentation is found under Titanium Quick Start, Titanium Docs, and then we're going to go ahead and navigate to installing the Android SDK. Okay, and let's see. No, oh, actually, that's not. Uh, it's not the piece I was thinking about. Let's see. That's the quick start. Now let's see on the side here, titanium mobile. Mm. That's the process that we need done, but uh, this does not look like the, the uh, instructions that that I've used before. Okay, let's see. Setting up the studio, installing titanium. Android SDK configuration. few things open here. Okay. Okay, so let's start here by um, installing and updating Android SDK. Perfect. And then under Windows, installing the SDK. Alright, so these are the steps that we just went through. Alright, and so this is what I was looking for. Uh, once SDK is installed, we're going to make an important selection of specific tools and specific Android API that Titanium will be using. Now that's very important because uh, the Titanium Accelerator is uh, another layer on top of the Android API, which means that the creators of Accelerator Titanium uh, were very specific about which versions they were using and, and which versions are compatible with our studio. So let's get back here to the Android. We'll say next. And when this application starts, uh, you, you will see um, the interface. Okay, great. So here's our interface. And one by one, we'll follow this picture here to make our selections. So we start by selecting the Android SDK platform tools 
and then we'll run down to Android 2.2 right here and we'll say we need the SDK platform and we also need the Google API okay perfect now let's continue here with um, Android 2.1 and we'll grab both the SDK and the Google API and we'll do the same for 1.6 we'll have the SDK and Google API I'm right here and then we're going to take all the extras okay let's see if that covers us perfect so with this selection completed we'll go ahead and say install 23 packages uh, go ahead and select accept all right down here so that way you have all nice green check marks next to the software that needs to be now downloaded and installed okay and so this is now downloading the Android SDK tools and next is going to install it on our system and this is going to take a moment I'm going to go ahead and, and pause the recording alright so let us resume uh, the Android SDK is now installed I'll go ahead and say close and uh, I can see that various uh, features have been installed we'll go ahead and close it alright so then the next step for us is to install the titanium studio itself run as administrator and in just a moment this is going to continue there we go See what the issue is now. Refresh. Alright, hopefully in a minute this is going to start the installation process. Let's see if the, the program is running. Yep. So this is the installation process for Titanium. We'll say next, agree, and again I'm going to um, install this in under CGRCC so that all our software is in the same place. We'll say next, and this is uh, just fine as far as the selection. Next and install. Okay, so as a result of this installation, under CGRCC, I have the Java installation, the Android installation, and the Accelerator Titanium. And by the way, if you are installing Titanium on the Macintosh computer, uh, you also will need Java, you will need the Android SDK, and you will also need the iOS SDK. To download iOS SDK, you have to go to the uh, the App Store, and uh, you may have to also create an account. Uh, it's a free account as an Apple um, developer. Uh, I believe that there is a an age um, requirement uh, for uh, 
for uh, the Apple developer program. Okay, so this is completed now. We'll say next and close. All right, great. With that, this software installed, I can go ahead and go to start and then Titanium Studio. Now, Titanium Studio is a cloud based software, which means that you actually have to sign in to the software in order to use it. So, you definitely have to create the Epsilvator account. Also, it means that when you run the software, it's going to uh, auto update. So, we'll go ahead and uh, take note of this uh, path. In fact, I'm going to put this right under the grcc directory this is the path to all our code so as we write code for our, our mobile apps this is where the code will reside that's where the projects will reside you can go ahead and select the checkbox here and that way um, it'll just load automatically to this directory so titanium studio while we've installed the initial piece of it it's going to run uh, a process for downloading an SDK for configuring itself um, according to the most uh, recent um, software available on the uh, accelerators website so that's what's happening right now and uh, this typically takes place without uh, problems without errors depending on uh, how quickly uh, software downloads at your location it may take um, a shorter period of time or longer period of time so we've installed a number of SDKs Java SDK Android SDK and now we also are going to install Titanium SDK so Titanium Studio is this Eclipse environment if you uh, are familiar with uh, with the Eclipse tool, uh, this is Eclipse, and you need the SDK uh, in order to develop uh, mobile um, apps. So let's create a new project at this point and see what our status is. We're going to select Titanium Mobile uh, our Mobile Project, not not the module but the project. Then we'll say next and uh, currently uh, the Android uh, SDK has not yet been recognized so let's see what we can do to make that recognized so that we can make this checkbox uh, let's see set up a configure SDK and uh, we'll go ahead and point uh, titanium to where we installed SDK which is under GRCC under Android right here Android okay and so notice that uh, that titanium is um, already uh, recognizing this SDK and filling out the other information as far as the default screen Please make a selection here to the uh, uh, HVGA. Uh, these diff different screens basically represent different Android devices that uh, we can preview our app in. And so let's just settle on uh, HVGA as, as the default uh, that, uh, that we'll be previewing apps in. Okay, we can also develop for BlackBerry if we download this particular uh, SDK. Let's say OK to that. And at this point, as you can see, I can select for this to be an Android device. I'll uncheck the mobile web for now. All right, this is my first app. And uh, the app ID is a, a, a backwards URL basically we start with uh, edu followed by grcc followed by co 275 followed by your name so uh, that's what the app id is 
and uh, in our class we'll use EDU GRCC CO275 and then just uh, follow with uh, the um, actual ID of the app. Uh, we want to keep apps unique because as apps are distributed they're distributed on a global market and so this is uh, the internal ID that we use for the app. Everything else is fine and we'll go ahead and uh, we'll say finish. And at this point our code is being put together. Uh, you can see the project is uh, opening here in the left pane. Perfect. And so now we're looking at this file. TIA TIAPP or or titanium app that XML and this file opens in this um, editor and we can modify certain uh, features uh, we'll come back to that file later on under the resources directory apps.js is the top um, the top file which contains the actual titanium code for our application and well at this point we should be able to run this demo app that's created with with a new project to do that we'll say run and then run and uh, you can see there's a set of informational messages if you see an error message uh, you might uh, uh, have made a mistake somewhere in the installation. Uh, some of the common uh, installation issues are, for example, on the Macintosh with iOS. If you installed iOS but you never ran it and you did not accept the agreement, uh, Titanium will not be able to use it and it will error out. Um, or if your Java home environment variable is not set, it will also error out. All right, so you can see that uh, this simulator of a phone is now uh, coming up, and um, Titanium basically runs in a different process than the simulator of the phone. So you can actually leave the simulator running throughout uh, your development of the code, so that way it's going to be a little bit faster in terms of uh, uh, showing changes um, made to your code. But right now the Android operating system is booting in the simulator and uh, soon we should see uh, our app running. If you have more memory, let's say 4 gigabytes of memory uh, are reasonable uh, for this kind of a development uh, system, uh, you will see uh, the uh, Android SDK um, uh, booting the phone emulator much faster. Uh, I have two gigabytes of memory on the system, so that's why uh, it's it is slower. If for any reason you feel that um, your app is not loading, you can actually go back to run and uh, uh, and rerun, uh, and uh, it, it might be just the thing that needs to be done. So that that's an option. I'll be just a little bit patient with my emulator here. At the bottom, you can see a number of messages, um, like preparing the SD card, uh, preparing uh, various devices on the phone itself.
Okay, so while this is loading, while this is loading, uh, let me show you what um, Titanium looks like on a Macintosh computer as well. So here I have a Macintosh computer, and uh, I have the same software. I have Titanium, and in this example, I cr also created a, a demo application. Uh, and I actually uh, already started this demo application on an iPhone simulator. This demo app simply has a window with two different tabs. You can see the name uh, or the caption on the window changes. Uh, this particular uh, simulator is, of course, a fully functioning uh, iPhone. So um, you can change settings, you can uh, change features. Um, let's see. Uh, on this particular system, I also uh, deployed this application uh, in mobile web. So you can see that this web page that's created has the same features as the mobile app. So we saw this application in the iPhone. Now we're looking at it uh, in the browser, and hopefully. Um, Hopefully, uh, in a moment here, it's going to load also, uh, also uh, in the Android uh, simulator. Okay, so we can see in the status window, the Android has fully now loaded, and uh, the system is going to, or Titanium is going to, install uh, our app, and then it's going to execute this app. Right, while this is happening, let me show you again the difference between um, running this on the Macintosh and Windows. On the Macintosh, I have an option here. I have an option here to run this project on the iPhone, iPad, or Android mobile web. And this, it's exactly the same code, but I have an option of deploying for these devices. Whereas on uh, on the uh, Windows uh, Titanium project, I only have the option for the Android and mobile web. And the reason why this is the case is because the iOS, the Macintosh development environment, only runs on Macintosh hardware. Uh, so that's why you can write code for iPhone apps on the PC, but you actually need uh, a Mac dash computer to execute them and to compile them and then to distribute them to uh, the um, uh, to the App Store, the the uh, iOS App Store.
All right, so we're still waiting for the for the app to come up. Again, the first time it, it takes a long time for this to happen, uh, and also the resources on the computer uh, play a role. All right, let me um, let's see. All right, there it is. So that's the splash screen for the app. And uh, in a moment, the, um, the splash screen will go away and we'll see the tabs for the demo app. All right, and here they are. So on an Android system, because of the many sizes of screens, uh, the menus are always at the well, not always, but in, in our apps, the menus will be at the top of the screen. Okay, but it's the same functionality. Again, just to show you in the mobile app uh, web, if I refresh this page, it also starts with a splash screen. And then I have my, uh, my app that, uh, that, that, that we created. Okay, so hopefully you're also able to get this demo app working. This demo app has its code under uh, apps.js. This is the code. Uh, if you modify uh, window, uh, window 1 and window 2, you'll see that this will uh, also get changed in the app. So thank you very much, and uh, hopefully you're able to install your Titanium Accelerator environment.